Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hello everybody, welcome again to the Adai Academy. And today we'll show you one of the difficult cases which you may face in your life, which is the antiumescent cataract or the fecomorphic glaucoma. This patient what, is 65 years old male, came to my clinic with loss of vision of his single eye. So this patient is single-eyed one, so he's now a blind one on presentation. The visual acuity was light perception, uh, and on measuring the intraocular pressure, I found that the intraocular pressure is very high. As, uh, it was 48 millimeter of mercury. There is no pleosis or radius. The fundus uh, uh, could appear uh, very hardly, but I, I, I could see it uh, to be a good fundus. There is no problem with the disc or the macula, but the disc is somewhat swollen. I, I think it, it could be because of uh, the elevated intraocular pressure for a time. Uh, there is no repuse or radius in the anterior segment, uh, and uh, the lens is swollen and large, making the intraocular pressure very high and that the anterior chamber is very shallow. So, in this case of the fecomorphic glaucoma, the two antiumescent cataract, the two large swollen lens. Uh, the cataract itself is, was faint nuclear cataract with some posterior subcapsular cataract. But the major problem is the lens swelling. Uh, so I dealt with this case as an emergency case to see if this patient's single eye vision. Uh, so I tried all measures in the clinic to decrease the interocular pressure from 48 down to 24 millimeter of mercury within, within five or six hours by using the Cinemax uh, tablets, which is the acetazolamide uh, tablets, 25, 20, 20, 20 uh, sorry, 250 milligram. I gave this patient two tablets at once in, on presentation, and I asked it for manitol 20% and gave him 250 milliliter intravenously over 30 um, uh, 30 minutes according to the, the patient's weight. Uh, and the anti, uh, the anti, uh, the topical anti glaucoma eye drops. So I could decrease the intraocular pressure from uh, 48 to 24 millimeter of mercury within five to six hours. And the patient could see hand motion much better than uh, uh, he could. Uh, C at presentation. So the the next station is the prepara preparation for of this patient for the surgery. The tension uh, is much lower, but the uh, the the pupil still dilated, the lens still swollen, and the vision is still very low and limited. Uh, so I prepared this patient for the second day. For the, I, I sent him for the OR on the second day, and before going to the OR, I gave him again the manitol dose to decrease more the intra the intraocular pressure by decreasing the the um, the vitreous uh, pressure and volume. So the uh, so this this the surgery in such case is not is, is not that easy because the very shallow anterior chamber and the high pressure of the vitreous and the swollen lens. So when I tried, as you see, and on starting the surgery, when I tried to inject any, anything inside the anterior chamber, it comes again outside of the eye because of the shallow anterior chamber and the high pressure. So I tried to think in another way. Uh, so the 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 way of thinking was like the way of giving the manitol. I was giving the manitol for this patient to decrease the vitreous volume and the vitreous pressure. So when I uh, tried to to deal with the lens, the anterior chamber is very tight. So I couldn't do anything in the anterior chamber, and I have to push this lens. To back to its normal position. I tried with the viscoelastic, but it failed 
it failed to do that. So the job is now is for the vitreous itself. I thought to decrease the vitreous volume, but directly without any medication, directly by the pars plana anterior vitrectomy. So I went for the pars plana surgeon using the MVR for measuring four millimeter from the cornea, but I was very careful to be directed down, not to touch the back of the lens. So like when I just removed part, a small part of the anterior vitreous, the, the uh, intraocular pressure was very low. Even the, the eye, the cornea start, started to collapse. And then I have, uh, and, and now I have a very good anterior chamber. So I could deal very comfortably with the lens, with, uh, uh, with the new space in the anterior chamber. I could do the rexes, as you see. Even by the system. And completed with the caps rexes. and did the hydro section and the hydro delineation, and then the FECO emulsification with ease. And finally, implantation of the intraocular lens very comfortably under water without use of the visco material. And finally, the stromal hydration and the closure of the old bones with a, with a very um, good anterior chamber depth and the lens in position without any protrusion or any back pressure. And at the same time, there is no problem with the vitreous cavity. And this patient uh, uh, went back to, uh, to home at the same day and I prescribed for him just the antibiotic and dexamethasone eye drops without any anti-glaucoma. And I, I, I saw this patient on the second morning with a very clear cornea, with a very good and well anterior chamber depth and uh, clarity. And the patient could see on, this, on the first morning, could see 160, which is, well, I was very happy with this results. So the message of this video when you are stuck with this swollen lens, you have to get a space for this lens to get to 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 go back uh, for its normal position. Don't hesitate to take this decision. It's a difficult decision, but it's a wide decision to take it. Uh, intraoperatively, in such cases, to do anterior vitrectomy, but you have to know the the the, the parameters of the pars plana anterior vitrectomy not to hurt not to uh, get another complication with that. Thank you for watching and I hope it a beneficial video and see you on the next one. Bye bye.